So hello. Hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my very small YouTube channel about thing. My name is Isabelle. I am in France. I have three sons and I have three cats. You know why it's reality. And I'm filming these videos uh, in English because I miss my English very, very much. I used to live in the United States over 32 years ago, and I don't have that many opportunities to be talking and practicing my talking in English. So once a week when I film such videos, this is about my opportunity to do so. So uh, if my accent, my hesitations and my mistakes do not bother you too much, and if a video episode about my young mobile year is of some interest to you, Please stay tuned. Okay, so first, what am I wearing on this very windy, very gloomy day, very cold day here in Normandy? As I needed a bit of comfort, I'm wearing my Highland Thistle sweater uh, by Caroline Holbrook. The Holbrook, this pattern was a gift from Ami Palku. She had a giveaway on her Instagram and I I won this and the little uh, cocoon tree purse, so bag. So um, I need the Highland Thistle sweater with um, that very rustic yarn from Normandy, from Lenal West. And I chose to knit with uh, uh, mixed uh, between dark black brown uh, fleece mixed with uh, the white fleeces that make some, some kind of a brownish gray that I thought was fitting the pattern very much. It's a very dry and rustic yarn. It keeps me warm. It gives me comfort. So this is why I'm wearing it today. Okay, so it's been almost two months, not quite two months, because we are at the beginning of August. But my last video about my yarn by year was in June, uh, when I had received uh, the Nutiden yarn and when I... Um, uh, set up the Q&A for my episode number 100. Uh, so it's been a quite a long time and I have visited quite a few places because I went on vacation. So I went to uh, visit uh, um, the two mohair farms I like a lot. Uh, in the Poitou and in the Pyrenees. And as you've already seen, I will link down below, uh, you've already seen the first videos I made for the first time when I went to visit there. So I'm going to add some pictures and footage as long as I'm talking about what when I went there and what I bought there. Uh, but I'm not going to make a special episode uh, about it. And before that, I went to Atelier Purlaine. So you have already uh, heard me talk about, uh, because I put it away, um, I've knit the pathway uh, shawl by May UKP with uh, the Hampshire Down, uh, Hampshire Down wool that she makes. So uh, I'm going to talk about it about today, um, what I spent there, because I haven't said how much I've spent there. And one of the purpose of my Yarn No By Year project is to manage my spending. So uh, in yarn and in patterns. Uh, so for patterns, I'm very successful at not buying patterns, but because so far I, I've just bought one book and one pattern. So I'm very successful at that. and. I will talk about the way I manage my patterns craving, uh, my online patterns buying cravings. Uh, I will talk about that in another video because I have a lot of things to unpack about that. Um, my Yondo by Year, where I buy only in person, I'm a bit on the spendy side. Uh, I'm a bit on the spendy side also because, and it's my choice, you, Nobody has to feel about, bad about that. Um, I bought a lot also because I want to send some yarn to some people I've been exchanging yarn goodness uh, over the past few months. And uh, uh, I, I really wanted to go the, to the mohair farm and, and, and buy some more mohair for them. So uh, 
I've been spending a lot more than I had anticipated and what you know I really wanted to be spending for the year but I'm perfectly fine and happy and this is what was a bird maybe that hit the window. Um, so uh, yeah, a bit more than what I wanted to be spending, but I'm still extremely happy about my expenses because they were all uh, thought through and conscious spending. And it was not spending and spending and spending just to feel myself or feel my emptiness. Okay, yes, that was a little bird that hit the window. You may hear my cat that my cats that are watching the little bird. Um, every time a little bird hit my uh, big windows, uh, they've always recovered and uh, escaped uh, after a few moments. So you may hear them scratching the window if it. If it gets too annoying, I will stop recording. Okay, so uh, first, when I went on uh, to Atelier Purlaine, I will also link down below the video where uh, I reported about that visit. So it was on June 17th, and I bought several, several things there. For this visit and the two visits, to the Mohair farms. I'm going to tell you how much I spent for me. And in the grand total, I will add everything I spent, I, I've bought for everybody. I don't want to put too many details about that. But at the same time, I really pondered was I going to be leaving aside aside uh, the uh, purchases I made for other people. But anyway, that's money I spend on yarn. So I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to report now how much I've been spending for myself. And I'll see if in the grand total I add everything that I've spent or just what I've spent for myself. Okay, so when I went to Atelier Purlaine, uh, I bought one kilogram of uh, the Hampshire Down, um, it's sports weight, yes, it's sports weight, and this one kilogram, I'm, I'm not sure how much I've said, I, I always want to say 100 kilograms, one kilogram of uh, Hampshire Down sports weight, and this one was 90 euros, so um, that's nine euros per hundred grams. I thought it was quite a good price. I want, so I already made the shawl that was about 320 grams or something. Uh, I have other ideas. Uh, in particular, I want to make um, a jacket, but I'm not sure I will make the jacket with that one. But anyway, I want to make a jacket. That was my original idea. And once I've used everything I wanted to be using, I'll um, also send that, the remaining of that to other people. The second yarn I bought when I was there is the uh, Romney Fin, so it's from Romney Ship. Uh, this one is more fingering weight. And this one was, let me see, uh, so I bought two 500 grams cones and each of them was 35 euros. So in addition, and, and also I wanted to uh, be knitting uh, things with that and maybe uh, also send the remaining to other people. If, if they are okay to be knitting with very rustic and maybe a bit scratchy on. At some point, and I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing because she's received or she's made a fingering weight with the Hampshire uh, yarn, which I think is a bit softer than the Romney. And at first, what, what I wanted to be doing is knit another sorrel with that fingering uh, yarn and I would fade the mohair 
from different colors that uh, Ro Rosemary sent me. So I have aqua blue, um, so a variegated aqua blue and a pure aqua blue, uh, mohair, white, and green. So I want to be um, fading the mohair to knit another sorrel. And at first I was thinking maybe I would knit a summer sorrel, but no, I will be knitting the regular sorrel with, uh, with the fingering weight and the mohair. And now that she's uh, made available the I'm sure down in fingering weight, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. Anyway, I see the yarn uh, because I want to go back there sometime at the end of uh, August. She has neat days. It's not neat nights. It lasts the whole day. And there are many people who are going there to be knitting with her. She has a special room. You've already seen that. She has a special room to receive everyone, to have everyone have coffee and uh, uh, tea and be knitting. So um, I want to attend one of these days because uh, it's a two hour drive for me. So uh, it's a bit further away and I would not go there just for one evening. So uh, a knitting day is perfect for me and meeting with other people. And I will see uh, what are the differences between oh, the bird is, is, is waking up and he's going to be moving away. So Onyx uh, is quite interested <laughs> into the bird. Um, so I, I will check uh, how the Hampshire fingering weight uh, is going to be and decide if I will knit my sweater with the sorrel sweater with the Romney or a f future Hampshire that I will buy. So when I was there, so I bought two kilograms uh, of yarn and I bought a few goodies that she's she's having. Uh, so that was a total for Atelier Pure Laine of 200 euros. So with um, all the things I bought for uh, other people too. Okay, so on July 19th, I was uh, at my mother's and uh, she's, she agreed I was going to go by myself if she did not want to, but she agreed to go again with me to Ferme de la Croche Coeur. So you, I will also link down below the first time I visited there. So I went to see Amandine. Uh, her, the babies, the baby goats were growing up and being like teens that were making <laughs> lots of different, <laughs> we were causing quite a bit of a trouble to her. But anyway, um, she had one of her younger goats escape by herself and, and have, she had two twins uh, a week before I arrived. So it was not planned. She did not want this goat to uh, have babies this year because she was just one year old. And uh, but she escaped and managed to go see, uh, you know, whatever <laughs> the ram or whatever. And uh, uh, she had the baby two twins one week before. Unfortunately, one of the twins was very very weak. And uh, it was a baby girl, um, two, two, two baby girls. And she had a lot of difficulties breathing. Amandine spent the whole time with her. Uh, so, and so she wasn't uh, bottle feeding them. She was uh, having them go and be uh, feed, fed by the mother, but she would hold them and this one was too weak and did not survive past the first 24 hours. Um, unfortunately, she was, she was extremely sad. Um, but the other one was, survived. And when I went there, it was the first time in one week she did not have to uh, present her to the mother for the baby goat to uh, get milk. 
And she was very happy because she went on her own when, when I was there with my mother and we saw her for the first time being nursed on her own. Uh, the mother was very fine and she's a very good mother and uh, she was taking care of her, but the baby was a bit weaker and could not go by, by herself uh, to be fed. So Amandine had to uh, go about every one or two hours, then night, and uh, get the baby under the mother to see if she was going to, to be, if she wanted to be fed or not. Uh, so that's going to be a big relief for her because she won't have to go <laughs> every hour or two and see if the baby wants to eat or be fed. Uh, anyway, but the, the, the baby goat is still very tiny, but she survived and she's quite uh, joyful now and she's, you know, kind of running and jumping like baby goats do. And uh, But when I went to see them, she was a bit sleepy, so uh, Amandine got her, wake her up, and uh, so she came and went to, towards us. The mother was very nice with us, and uh, um, she let, you know, she let her, she let her touch the baby, and she let us touch the baby, and... Uh, uh, she nursed her when, when we were there, so that was really, really nice. So she had uh, all of her goats. Ala, I, I'm sorry, I, I will have to stop because somebody told me the exact word uh, for goats. It, they are not sheared, but I do not recall. So when we, we visited, um, the goats were going to be sheared uh, one week after, or a couple weeks after, uh, we visited. Um, so everything is going is doing good for her, for Amandine. Other than there are lots of problems uh, in uh, getting her yarn processed. So there is one big difference between Ferme de la croche uh, the one I was just talking about, and the one fro from Olon in the Pyrenees that I will be talking about next. Amandine, as I've already said uh, when I first went to visit her, she grades her yarn between, I think there is four or five categories, or three or four categories, and she weighs out how much yarn from each category she sends to the cooperative where over 250 or 300 people belong, maybe 200, I'm not sure I recall. Once she sends her yarn to be processed, washed and combed and uh, uh, milled and every, in the, to the mill and spinned and everything, dyed, um, she knows how much of each category of yarn she's sent out and she receives back the same amount processed uh, into bowls that she sent out. And uh, once the yarn arrives to the uh, washing station, there it's graded again to make sure that her grading was good and also to make sure that everyone's grading was good and all the same grades of yarn between baby uh, mohair to coarser mohair are uh, then processed uh, in different batch according to the grading, of course, but are processed all uh, together. So the yarn she receives is not the yarn from her own flock. Uh, it's the yarn from uh, everybody's, everybody's goats uh, that is of the same grading. That ensures a very reproducible and very uh, homogeneous uh, uh, production at the end for yarn balls. The difference between what Amandine does and what... Uh, uh, the Olon uh, farm does is that in Olon, when you buy the mohair, you buy the mohair from uh, the group of uh, goats that are there. And uh, somebody told me how 
goats, a flock of goats is named, and I, I don't think it's a flock, so I'm just going to be checking, because as somebody took the time to tell me how it was called, I'm going to use the proper word. Okay, so it was Kate Harrell. Thank you, Kate. Uh, that said that a group of uh, goats was a herd and not a flock, the way a group of uh, sheep is. Anyway, in Olon, you buy the young from the herd, from the goats from the farm. When in Poitou, what Amandine does is uh, uh, have her young processed by a cooperative and she gets the amount of each grading she sends out. So... That's the difference. Um, so when I went there, I bought several uh, balls, uh, several quantities, a sweater quantity for someone else. So I'm not going to be showing it. Uh, and it's a different yarn and a sweater quantity for myself of this. I'm not sure you can see it uh, that way. It's a gray, but it's almost a purplish gray. Um, that uh, of the same category, the same, the, the, the bigger mohair that I made my Agnes jumper. So I also, I'm waiting for some, I'm, I'm not sure um, of the exact color. It's a very dark purple. Uh, it's amethyst, it's called amethyst, but it's not... It's not bright purple like the Jultone is. Um, uh, so, so this one is a bit purplish gray when I see it, and I'm not sure if I show it that way. It's a bluish purplish gray. It's a very beautiful gray. So I have a sweater's quantity. She had nine balls, uh, so I bought them. Um, one problem is also that all of her... All of her 2022 uh, yarn uh, wasn't available to her when I went to visit her in July of 2023. So that's a big problem for small producers because all of these delays mean that she did not have much stock at all. And the amethyst I had seen um, in my previous time I went there and I had said, you know, when you receive some, you put some away for me uh, because um, I want to get that color away uh, because she just had maybe one or two balls left. And uh, so I, would, I wanted all the same bath and everything and the sweater quantity. So um, uh, after I left and when I was in the Pyrenees, I guess, when, yeah, when I was, no, when I was, at my mother's for the second time. Uh, she called me and she said she had received the amethyst. So uh, I made an exception so that she doesn't have to keep save them for me until I go back to visit my mother. That may be several weeks or months from now. And it's already difficult enough for her not to have all of her production to be sold. So um, I decided to have them shipped to me and, and I paid for, for them. So it's an online buy. That's an exception to my rule. But I think it's for the good cause. So I'm waiting for another sweater quantity that I will show you uh, in the amethyst colorway, amethyst colorway, in addition to this purplish gray. It's, it's a very particular gray. I think the um, color doesn't show at all the way it looks. Anyway, so when I was there... Uh, along with um, the other things I bought for other people, I did spend for myself. So I have nine balls of this one and I will have 10 balls of uh, the amethyst colorway. So I spent 257 euros and 25 cents. Uh, in the grand total for uh, that day uh, was 360 euros and 10 cents. So you see, I've spent a lot of money, but I'm very happy I spent money with Amandine, to Amandine. I bought things from Amandine because her mohair is really exceptional.
So then, uh, after I spent the week with my mother, I went to the Pyrenees. And on July 25th, uh, I went to Olon, to uh, the mohair farm from Olon in the Pyrenees. And I, I did something I had not done in a long time. She has walks with uh, kids and families to go see the goats where uh, they pasture and she talks about her work and everything. So I went there. It's not for the walk. It was just to be with her and also to pay for the visit. And uh, at the end, we have a little snack and everything. Uh, so what she did is uh, first the goats that were in the barn for that day, she took them out to pasture and um, the village allows her and has made a fence everywhere where they want her goats to be taking care of the land and eat all the bad things that all the bad weeds and everything that goats love. So they do the gardening for the village. So uh, she was taking the goats and the uh, oldest babies uh, to that pasture. And after that, we went in the mountain, in the mountain uh, to go get all the males. So some of them are used for the reproductions. Some of them are neutered and uh, uh, she makes canned food out of with them. That was a, a very good pate, but I'm quite sorry if you do not eat uh, meat. Um, but she has to have some kind of uh, sustainable way other than just yarn, because as with, with sheep, you can... Uh, use the yarn and you can also use the meat. Uh, in France, many people eat sheep, but not goat. It's not very, you, you are not used to eating goats. So she makes pâté and other derived products. So, um, so that's, that's a way to complete a bit of her income. So she has a big group of males, uh, some of them neutered, some of them not. And uh, so we went to get these males back to the barn because they had been out also uh, doing the gardening for the village at some point. But she had seen a couple of days before that two of them uh, were limping. So she wanted to have them back in the barn and uh, have a look at them and if necessary, uh, treat them or have the vet come to, uh, to take care of them. So we spent the day well, the morning, like that, it was, the meeting was at nine o'clock in the morning and we came back at 12 or 12.30. So that was, that was quite a, a long time we spent with her. So she also uh, uh, told of the story of her, of her farm and uh, how she took over the person who was previously there. And what she does is keep, so maybe I had not mentioned that because I, maybe I did not recall or it escaped me the first time around when she talked about, told me about her stories. Um, so what she does is she stocks up three years of her production. So you need to be doing other things to be able to be living if, if there is a, three years gap of production. So that's why she uh, um, have the visits, she, she receives schools and, you know, she does other things. So she stocks up th for three years worth of her production of a yarn production. And then she rents, she rents a small, a small truck and she drives to the place where it's washed and combed. And then part of it is shipped uh, someplace to be uh, um, spun as, as mohair. And part of it she brings back. So I'm not sure if she sends out the one that is the mo mohair cardé, the one that is uh, of a decay, a, looks like a regular decay weight yarn and uh, one uh, or, or and, and she drives her mohair product to make be made of mohair, the regular fluffy mohair, somewhere. But at you know, 
she divides her production and some is made we is going to be made uh, as mohair, mohair cardé and some of is, of it is going to be made as mohair plain mohair fluffy mohair so she did not have any mohair cardé left this is the one i wanted to be buying and i was sort of disappointed because i had that kind of deep purple once again I'm on a kind of a purplish train right now um, for colors, other than natural colors. And uh, um, she did not have the one I had in, in mind, so I was quite disappointed. But she said there is another one that you may like, and it's a mix of uh, yarn from sheep from the valley the valley it itself and mohair and I'm going to stop here because I've written somewhere and I don't have it in mind uh, the proportion of uh, sheep wool and uh, uh, mohair okay sorry I can't find it again if I can find it again I will uh, I will write it down and but I'm, I'm not sure I recall so I these are less expensive because it's uh, both uh, it's a mix of mohair and sheep wool it's a uh, regular looking yarn. It's mm -hmm. very plump and it's very soft. Although, you know, I think the sheep wool from the Valley that are raised for me. No, no one makes um, yarn from the sheep from the Valley. Uh, so I, I would suppose it's very coarse. So it's been also, it, she selects um, the finer, the finer wool. But anyway, this one is very, very soft. She has only one color from na for now. That kind of natural gray, it's the natural uh, sheep wool that is creamy white and mixed with the white mohair from her goods. I'm not sure I recall. I will have to check. I'm not sure it was 80% wool or 70% wool and 20 or 30% mohair. I do not recall. Anyway, on that gray base, uh, she's going to be trying to be uh, dyeing some of uh, some of it on the gray base. And what I told, and she said, do you think it's a good idea? And I said, maybe you recall, or maybe she did not know, but you will know. Derehome Natura which is a, a French yarn brand from the south east of France, near Arles. Uh, she, the Derehome Natura dyes on grayish mixed wool, not, not white washed and whitened wool on the gray wool. And that that's what I told her. It gives a lot of deepness it, it makes the colorways very deep not homogeneous that is really nice and i'm not sure you're going to be able to see it that way if i you know if i hide my eyes you may and you see there is some parts that are gray white and i'm sure that dying on that irregular colored gray wool will make a very, very deep and beautiful colors. So the next question she asked is, was, what would you dye it with? And I said, I don't know. Choose the colors you sell the most, I think. Because uh, at the same time, I uh, would have made plenty of ideas <laughs> for dyeing this wool, but uh, at the end, she's the one selling them. So uh, she was thinking a very deep red. And I said, OK, so have, it, have your dyer try. Because if you dye too deep, maybe you're going to lose the darker part and the, uh, the lighter parts. And you will lose the depth of the coloring. Uh, so she will have to try and she will probably make a red and a green for Christmas. Of course, I told her, you know, a deeper gray and uh, blue ones and a dark purple. 
an aubergine type of colorway. I would I would like very much. So anyway, so I got ten balls uh, of this one. These are much less expensive than the one hundred percent mohair, of course. So um, this one was uh, sixty three euros because they are uh, six euros and thirty cents uh, per one hundred grams. I don't have the weight. Uh, it's on, all on my own paper, but I recall um, I recall I would knit it with, and I asked her with uh, four millimeter needles, so I would think it's around sports and or decay, sports or decay. So that's what I bought for myself. Then uh, I asked her what what she had in mohair, and she did not have much left either and she had this a sweater quantity that was the only sweater quantity ah, I'm, I'm not sure why this this side is uh looking this one is the correct side it's it's a brownish i'm gonna maybe it's the way the light is it's a brown chestnut light chestnut um color if I do that, okay, this side is the side that has the better color. If I do that way, yeah, maybe you can see it if I do that way, but I have to see. Yeah, this side is the better. It's a, it's a medium brown, I would say. Medium brown. It doesn't have these red hues that you see here. Not at all. And I guess it's from the uh, window, the, the uh, light from the window. So uh, this medium brown, it's a fine mohair. So it's a, at a finer gauge than the one I've been using so far. Um, so there is silk and mohair. Uh, and uh, I have, I did get 10 balls too, I think. So I, I have no project in mind. It's more than enough, so once again, I will be giving away uh, the remaining. And uh, so it was 129 euros, so that's 12 euros and 90 cents per ball. And when I was there, I also bought for two other people and other accessories that I will be giving away, and I don't want to be showing them to you. Yeah, I've talked about everything, yes. Uh, so I spent in all long 345 euros and 20 cents. So that's including what I bought for me. So that's two sweaters quantity between um, the uh, sheep wool and mohair and the 100% uh, mohair silk. It's not 100% mohair. I think this one is 10% uh, silk, I have something like that. So uh, yes. So that's quite a bit of money. I'm very comfortable with that uh, because there are also other goodies and other yarn for other people and other things that I could not buy here if I wanted to. So if I'm uh, adding everything up, and I It's uh, 1,236 euros and 95 cents since at the beginning of the year. So that for that, that's for eight months. And the average per month is 154 euros and 62 cents. Um, and you've understood that for some months I did not spend anything. So, um, I'm quite pleased with that, even though I have been buying much more than for me. I want to send out things. I, it makes me happy. I know the people I'm sending out said, don't, don't buy anything for me. And I did buy because it was making him, me happy. And that's the most important thing. And these people have been sending yarn to me. So, uh, it's sort of an exchange and it's a way for me to be also helping these producers, these local producers, uh, uh, 
who do not need me to be living, but I know I contribute to, uh, to their activity. And also, that also makes me very happy because Amandine and uh, Céline from the Pyrénées, uh, Amandine and Céline are two young women who deserve to succeed. And it's very difficult for them right now. None of them complain. Please do get me wrong. They did not complain at all. Uh, but knowing that your production from last year is still on hold, knowing that you have to wait for three years to ship or drive your production to be processed and get it back to send it, it's not an easy, it's not an easy job. And it's a 24 hours, uh, seven days job. You can't leave the goats by themselves. So um, it's, it's a difficult it's a difficult job and I'm very happy I'm putting my money my money in into their own activity. Let me say it that way. And uh, so I'm also happy I will be sending out uh, more hair. Uh, I haven't decided yet uh, because uh, for the, uh, the yarn from Atelier Pure Laine, it's a bit more rustic, so it's not for everybody, I guess. Uh, but anyway, I also will be trading or exchanging uh, uh, what I have left from uh, Atelier Pierlaine. So that also makes me happy because it creates some uh, relationships uh, between you who are watching me and me. All of that was, I did not decide it for the first time around on my own. I did not say, okay, I'm going to send that to you. No. Every time you were the one telling me, uh, okay, so it's your birthday and I want to send you something. And I did, I had not said I want, it, it was my birthday because I wanted anything. It was just something that was a fact. Um, and Karin from Germany said, okay, I've watched your, your know by your project and it's, inspired me and I also watched the fact that you were you were uh, you're on kryptonite that you were not being able to knit from and I have some in my stash and I'm sending it to you so I'm saying sending more hair in ex it's sort of in exchange but it's not an exchange because I knew I knew it was not one for one and I knew none of them was expecting anything in exchange as a matter of fact. So, uh, yeah, it's presents, having fun and uh, uh, getting a lot of joy and happiness from my expensive, during my Yarn by year, it was an, ex an unexpected uh, outcome of this project. I, I never expected anyone to be sending me anything. I was, it was, I was just doing this, this project for myself to regulate how much yarn I buy, to regulate how many patterns I buy. And so far, even though I haven't reduced my stash, mm -hmm, uh, I'm quite happy with the expenses I made because all of them were a choice. And it was not at two cart and buy, at two cart and buy because I'm tired, because I'm unhappy, because I'm feeling empty, etc., etc. You put the wording that correct for you and when you click the buy button uh, just to compensate for some unhappiness. It was not at all that way uh, when I did spend all of that money f from the beginning of the year and I'm very happy and very comfortable with that. So all that said, uh, I'm thanking you a lot for being here with me, for inspiring me for uh, having sent things to me and making friendly relationships that we, we would never, never ha ever have made otherwise if I it was not for this very small YouTube channel, the way I used to say it, it's a very small YouTube channel, but um, everyone here is here for the same reason because we share that love for yarn and love for knitting and yarn from sheep, goats, 
cotton and any other kind of vegetables that we can make yarn from. So, uh, yeah, I, I thank you very much for being here with me, for inspiring me, for being so kind, for giving me input, giving me ideas, making me think, making me process all the bad reasons were why I wanted to be buying yarn and or buying things. And uh, uh, yes, if it was not for that project and for you, I would not be knitting the same way. Maybe I would be knitting the same patterns, I do not know. But I, what I know is that most certainly I would not be knitting the same way that I am knitting now because I put much more thinking, much more thought, much more mind. I, I don't want to use the name mindful because many people use mindful or mindless or, it, you know, I, I, I'm much more present with my knitting and I know why. And it's very important. It's very satisfying. And it's even more satisfying than to buy yarn and say, okay, what am I going to be making with that one? Most probably a pattern with a very nice uh, stitch pattern cables or something like that, because I think it's going to be showing the pattern very well or the stitch pattern very well, or some kind of color work. Uh, even though you, you've seen uh, with my Agnes jumper that I can have a nice color work, if I say so, uh, if I may say so, with mohair. Also, this mohair, I, a finer mohair, uh, I, I want, I have an idea for a sweater uh, with that one, and the sweater that I, as I know the mohair, uh, how it knits up and everything, that I would make my own, not design. I would, I have a book that uh, talks about uh, all the different yoke, the way you need, you need um, uh, yoked sweater or raglan sweaters or everything. And I think I have an idea of a very simple uh, type of uh, sweater, raglan sweater. I, I think I'm going to be using that book to come up with my own sweater with to my own measurements and a very simple one that will let the yarn shine and if there are some leftovers most probably a cool or a shawl or something like that so but that's my idea for now i may change and uh yes uh, a very thoughtful activity for me either when I buy yarn or when I knit yarn. And all of this is thanks to you. So I do hope, I want to thank you a lot for being here with me. I've already said that. And I do hope that your knitting, that the yarn you buy, the yarn you get, the yarn you receive is bringing you much joy and happiness because we do have to actively work on that. It's not coming all, all of by itself, it's not a magical process and it's not it's not a process where you say to yourself i'm happy i'm happy and i end up feeling happy no it's it's a mindful process where you find the joy the one stitch of joy in your day and you know it's joy and you know it's there and it's a little treasure that is going to be lighting up your day even though the rest of the day is all filled with darkness and sadness and disease or the tragedy tragedies we have in the world right now and you can treasure these little sparks of joy in your day that you placed there with your knitting or other activities but we are talking about knitting so yeah Please treasure all the little sparks of joy that uh, your knitting brings you. And uh, I will see you next time.